Okay, let's talk about silver, uh, silver miners, call options, gamma squeezes, um, you know, this big short squeeze situation, all of that. Uh, I'll show some trend lines and a potential trade setup that I think probably will happen today that I'll be looking for a call option. And so anyway, this is, uh, well, this is Brian Lewis with MMT Investing and things just changed. And please poke the like button to help me out. Um, the silver, let's go out to a, a wider chart. We go out to daily as we can see what's going on. So silver in general, I mean, this is a super long-term silver chart has been picking up since like 2000 something slowly. It did a weird bubble thing. Um, and now it's off on another sort of bubble trajectory. It's picked up support. Let's go in a little tighter on the recent activity on silver. So it looks like silver's going into a bubble right now. And that's a fun time to do trades and that's a great time to do uh, call options. Um, but this is just silver itself. So it's not directly connected to the miners, but you can see we pulled down and the, uh, the 2020 crash, we pulled down below the general silver trend line. And now we've taken off on a trajectory that's been kind of hard to, to figure out until just now. Like we got support and it didn't really paint a trend line when you hit it once, but it came down and double tapped it here. Uh, and it got support on this higher, it's basically a bubble takeoff bull market support line. Uh, and now it's gone parabolic up off that line. So this is, you know, the whole silver short squeeze, whatever thing. Um, I think it's a real trend line anyway, before all that stuff came out, it was already getting support. And I know everyone's saying Wall Street bets is like who is talking about the silver short squeeze. And I've been in there, read it, reading everything. And they have deleted all the posts about a silver squeeze and everyone in there is like, where did this come from? Like the last day or two, like, uh, you know, they've been talking about the GameStop squeeze for like six months or something. And everyone's like, Oh, new people are coming in here and trying to post stuff. They're trying to moderate the thing. Anyways, the silver squeeze whole thing is not a wall street bet crowd thing, but somebody did get that post in there and then it kind of went viral. So there is definitely, like crazy news media about that. Um, and there's also a silver trend line and silver. So like uh, first majestic, I'll take a look at the first majestic stock chart. Well, right now, um, first majestic is my favorite silver miner. Uh, the company, I think it's a good company and they're, really a silver miner. Like most companies mine other stuff and then have silver as like a, a byproduct metal of other mining. But First Majestic um, not only just mines silver, but they're the only miner that actually mints silver coins. And so I on Saturday I was at their, their uh, bullion store and I got, uh, you know, coins and bars from them. And they were 30 bucks on Saturday. And then Sunday morning, still 30 bucks. Sunday night, $35. Like it just jumped uh, at the bullion store. And so a whole a whole bunch of places online are are out of stock right now. Like a bunch of the dealers, which maybe they are, and maybe they're just holding it because it's like spiking up right now and they don't know how to price it and they want to hold it <laughs> if it's going up like parabolically. But uh, First Majestic, it looks like they're still selling now. But I saw the price was 35 last night. I don't know where it is now, but it should be around there. Um, anyway, I think that the silver bull market is real. And then maybe we're getting a bubble trend line here on First Majestic. So this was the stock that I wanted to talk about is First Majestic and sort of bubbles and options and everything that we've been seeing in other stocks and how, how this trade setup might look. So, I mean, First Majestic's just been trending for a long time, around whatever, 12, 14, something. 
not doing a whole lot. And it just got, you know, a little hypey looking thing, which a lot of the times, you know, you get kind of news hype and it will, it'll come up and it'll kind of crash and then just kind of, usually it'll sit a little bit higher than where it started. But I mean, the whole move is basically just moving up a tiny bit, but it does like this big parabolic news spike and just comes back and just sits at a little higher level. That's what happens like 80 to 80% of the time when you get a news freak out thing. It's just one little parabolic thing that comes down. And this did not do that. This did, this did a little wobble. Um, so in that case, half the time when you do get a wobble like this, like it'll just be a second spike, which is doing now, and it'll come back down, and then it will crash back to slightly above where it first took off. Um, so that about half the time it'll do that. And so I expect this thing to come down to this support line in any case. And if it comes to the support line and it holds, then that's a spot to do a call option. And I, not investment advice, I think I said that already. But, um, but yes, yeah, so you can get a call option and look for the next spike off of this support line, or you can do a super long dated call option and just sit on it. Um, if you think it'll, you know, like a short dated call option, if it's just like only until the end of the week or something like that, um, when it, whenever it spikes off the trend line, you want to close the call option. So, you know, when you open the call option, you would go and you do buy to open, and then you can do a strike for like the end of the week. Um, and then I think the highest, the highest strike I saw for weeklies, I think was a 30 strike, which is, that's as far out of the money as you can get to the upside on this one. And like based on this chart, it's going to be, even if it doesn't like spring up, it's going to be up there anyway by the end of the week if it stays on this trend line. So like as far out of the money as you can get them right now looks fine for like a weekly kind of one. I might do something like that. Um, and I think it will kind of stay on this trend line. But if it does pop up, then you just close the option right then um, because the time costs you money and it probably will spike again. Um, so one week, maybe, probably probably a two-week option along this trend line at 30 is as high as you can go. It's probably, you know, because the end of the week may be really close to 30 somewhere. So usually I'll do two to three times the, like, time length that I'm looking at for the trade. So if I think it's going to be here in one week, I should probably get a two- or three-week call option. So there's a bunch of extra time on it. And then you can sell to close it whenever it, you know, whenever it hits your target. It could spike up and hit it early and you just close it. Or it could slowly crawl up here and then you can close it. Um, or you can just get in the money and you can keep sitting on it for a while um, if you have more time. So that's kind of a shorter thing. And then I guess the, I mean, this thing could could go crazy for a long time like silver could potentially be in like a 40 year kind of bull market now it's possible that this is like a 40 year bull market for silver so uh, the miners in that case could just keep going up and up and up for years um, so I mean you can get like a, a one year I think the longest the longest dated call option I saw on this one this morning was uh, January 2023, uh, two years call option. And, uh, and then I think the strike on that one was like 35. So you, that's like a price you would expect to see next week, a two year call option, whatever, but that's as far out of the money as you can get. And so if you go way out of the money, that's not that far out of the money, but that's as far out of the money as you can go. Um, that makes the call option a lot cheaper. And then you get paid exponentially more once you've gone up there. You basically didn't have to pay for this, this first part of the gain. And then everything after that is sort of like profit as though you bought 100 shares. Um, so, yeah, like when you buy one call option, you're trading 100 shares 
and they're worth nothing until you're above your strike price. So if you strike at 35, your call option is worth nothing here until you get up here above 35 and then and then it's the same as having 100 shares. So you're, it's sort of like buying an insurance policy that pays you 100 shares only if you're above that strike. So um, for like a two year or something, you know, you're just holding it long term and you just try to get a cheaper one. But um, on like a week or a two week call option, uh, say it spiked up, you know, tomorrow. Like you want to trade and it doesn't have to like get up to this price for you to close it. Like you can just sell it to somebody else and you just sell to close and it'll be worth a lot more here when it spikes up, even though it hasn't made it up to the strike yet. And it's only one day. So you haven't lost a lot of money on the time length of the contract. The longer stuff goes sideways, the call option keeps losing value. Um, if it's at, if it's out of the money or in the money, it'll keep losing value because there's less time for it to go up. Um, so like the time has value and then it has the closer you get to the time limit, it has way more value. Like if you're two years away from the time limit, like how close you are to this number is not so important, but like if it's tomorrow, if you're, if the option closes below here tomorrow, it's worth zero. And if it closes above here tomorrow, it's worth 100 shares. So it starts getting super important the closer you get to the end of the, the option. Um, so you start seeing the prices like go exponential uh, towards 100 shares or towards zero, the price of the option, whether or not you're in the money, you know, above your strike price. Anyway, so that's that's the setup that I'm looking at. And I think, I guess... Well, as we all know <laughs> from the last two years, but especially this year, looking at GameStop and Tesla and stuff like that, the actual fundamentals of the underlying company really have nothing to do with the stock trading price, um, except for, so, I mean, the stock just trades on whatever people are buying and selling it for, but, uh, and it, you're not getting profit from the company and, Everyone thinks you're like owning part of the company, but like you really don't have voting rights or anything with most stocks. And like, I don't, I think First Majestic might have um, dividends. So yeah, I haven't really thought about that. Like if you get a call option, you're like trading on a hundred shares, but if you held a hundred shares, you would be getting dividends, I think. So in that case, there is like, a connection between the company's profit and the stock if you're getting dividends but dividends can change it's not like if you buy a stock at a hundred dollars and it has dividends and then the company gets in trouble you know the stock drops to ten dollars and, and they can just stop paying you dividends so um so it's just not connected to the company in the way that people think it is like dividend stocks are not necessarily safe or anything like that but um, yeah, I never really thought about like a dividend stock on a call option because I think I think First Majestic, uh, First Majestic does pay dividends if you buy the if you buy the shares. Um, but anyway, like the silver bull market and the price of silver, and then the the company itself, like those are not related. The company is not related to the stock, but they would all happen at the same time that. Like if silver takes off, the silver miner companies are going to get a ton of media and they'll take off. Um, and then the odds that they go bankrupt, like the only fundamental that really connects the stock to the to the company is like if the company stops existing, the stocks are worth zero and they go away. Um, that's a real fundamental, but that's like the only fundamental. And so, yeah, so this is, you know, the casino and this is a, a bet. This is like a leveraged bet. And yeah, that's just kind of how it works. And it looks like we're picking up a bubbly trend line on silver itself. And it looks like this just took off and it's going to do a bubble kind of trend line. And when it comes to this trend line, I'm looking at a call option and I may do, yeah, just what I was saying. 
my screen just get dark? Um, yeah, so I may do like a couple, like two week strike at like 30 and I may do like a two year strike at like 35 or something like, I think the, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll take a look at it, but yeah, you can play around and like way out of the money is how you get paid the most. But if you don't, if it doesn't happen and if your option just expires, it's worth zero. So um, it's kind of a cool way to go either long or short because you know, the markets are doing vertical crazy stuff. And when you see a setup for vertical moves, you can make a bet that it's going to do a vertical move soon. And you do have to time it and be correct. So it's super risky. But, um, you know, like the whole short squeeze situation where people are holding shares short, like if that goes against you, like there's no limit to how screwed that you can get short. As we've seen on GameStop, people were short at like $8 and now they're upside down, whatever it was, like 350 or something, you know, where is it? Um, yeah, where is that stock? Uh, 240 it's crashing so I need to do a video on that one as well and that's a potential call option as well on that bubble it's doing something very similar uh, GameStop I think is going to come down to a support line where a call option would make sense but they're just so freaking expensive on GameStop that it doesn't make any sense to do that um, anyway I think GameStop and First Majestic are cool things to do at support I think the support on GameStop was about 180 the support line and the support here is about whatever 20 bucks so uh, when it comes down here i'll be looking at call options here and probably not looking at call options on gamestop because that thing has already taken off and gotten ridiculous and it's hard to know like it may go for one or two more bubbly spikes but it's gonna fall soon ish but like this one's just taking off so this is a really cool one um all right that's all the things, I think. So happy trading.